Access your free language gifts right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, can you talk about your home? With the brand new My House PDF Cheat Sheet, you'll be able to talk about your home and everything inside. Furniture, the different kinds of rooms, and much more. Download it for free, right now. Second, if you love travel, then you'll love this. The brand new Travel Words and Phrases PDF. Learn all the must-know travel phrases with this ebook. Download it for free, right now. Third, useful bank vocabulary. This one minute lesson gives you all the must know bank vocabulary so you can start talking about money in your target language. Fourth, essential vocabulary for talking about education. Can you talk about your school and the degree you have? This one minute lesson will teach you to do just that. Fifth, free language learning audiobooks for anyone that gets to see this video. You get free access to our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with audio and video lessons and our complete language learning program, then get 31% off Premium and Premium Plus with the Pretty Big Deal Sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the lesson description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi guys, I'm Courtney, and today I'm here in Teotihuacan, which is about an hour's drive from Mexico City. As you might know, Mexico is very well known for having various pyramids, ancient temples, and ruins all throughout the country. Today, we're here to explore one of the biggest pyramids in the world. Let's go check it out. Located about 50 kilometers northeast of modern-day Mexico City, Teotihuacan was one of the largest urban centers in the ancient world, and to this day, no one knows who built it. The Aztecs arrived on the Mexican Central Plateau during the first half of the 14th century. As they were coming from the north, they discovered the abandoned ruins of the city. They connected it to their own beliefs and gave it the name Teotihuacan, meaning birthplace of the gods. Right now, we're walking through La Calzada de los Muertos, which is Spanish for Avenue of the Dead, and it was the main road for this ancient city. This massive central road is roughly 40 meters wide and runs for more than four kilometers. It's surrounded by impressive ceremonial architecture, as well as platforms that the Aztecs believed to be tombs, therefore inspiring the name Calzada de los Muertos. Throughout this entire avenue, you'll come across a series of steps that are both high and steep. It's pretty difficult and challenging, so I would recommend bringing comfortable walking shoes and clothing. So through all these up and down stairs, I think I found a shortcut and I'm gonna take it. Mexican folklore says the Pyramid of the Moon and the Pyramid of the Sun were built in honor to the birth of the sun and moon gods. To honor the gods, priests were said to perform daily ceremonies at the pyramids. So after a bit of walking, we arrive to this intersection where both temples connect to the Avenue of the Dead. Behind me, you'll see the Pyramid of the Sun, and to my right, the Pyramid of the Moon. Right now, we're gonna try to make it to the top of the Pyramid of the Sun, so let's go. Less than half a mile south of the Pyramid of the Moon is the Pyramid of the Sun. It has a height more than 63 meters and a base more than 225 meters long on each side, making it the third largest pyramid in the world.
The Pyramid of the Sun has 248 total steps. Not only that, but they're also extremely tall and extremely steep, so it's very dangerous. But we finally made it. Its elevated platforms were likely used for rituals. Tombs found associated with the structure contained both human and animal sacrifices, along with grave goods such as obsidian and greenstone. The location of the pyramid and its design are thought to represent the three levels of their cosmos, celestial, terrestrial, and subterranean. Throughout the main intersection on the Avenue of the Dead, you'll find many people selling you a series of different creative Aztec pieces such as carvings, sculptures, and jewelry. As you're leaving, you can also find a broader selection of more souvenirs and crafts related to Teotihuacan. So that's it for today, guys. This was Teotihuacan, and I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Hey there, friends of SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today, we are going to see the second part of our videos of idiomatic expressions with the preposition por. That's correct. So, enjoy, enjoy the video! video. Woo! Okay, guys, so in a previous video, you watched 15 idiomatic expressions using the preposition por. Now, since we said that there are lots of these expressions in this video, we're going to cover 15 more. But for that, we're going to see first a sketch to test your listening skills and to see if you already know these expressions. So let's watch it. Masha, mira, ya tengo tu pelo por todos lados. Oh, oh. wow, es la primera vez. No, <laughs> es la primera vez que te veo paseando, Masha. No, ¿de qué habla? Siempre la paseo yo. Solo que generalmente lo hago por dentro de la casa. <risa> ¡Qué chistoso! Oye, por cierto, ¿no has visto dónde puedo conseguir un perro cholo escuincle? Lo he buscado por todas partes y no sé dónde conseguirlo. Bueno, eh, pues por suerte aquí hay uno. ¿En dónde? ¿Qué? ¡Ja! ¡Qué chistosito! <risa> bueno, mira, por lo menos yo tengo buen sentido del humor, pero, hey, ¿tú qué tienes? Te veo eh, bastante triste. Es que son muchas cosas, Diego. No entraba a la escuela de música. Eh, me entregué por completo en la audición y aún así no lo logré. Eh, no estoy muy bien económicamente. Eh, tampoco... Todos dicen de lo guapo que eres tú en nuestros videos y nadie me dice nada a mí. Bueno, Efra, pues mira, entiendo eh, que estés triste, eh, pero vamos, tú siempre encuentras la forma de llegar a tus objetivos, no te rindes fácil. Pues es cierto, gracias, Diego. Uh, también me enteré de otra escuela de música por medio de internet, de que esta se especializaba en piano y... Creo que es buena, tal vez logre entrar. Por supuesto, tú eres un excelente pianista, sin duda vas a poder entrar. <risa> Además, por otra parte, los problemas económicos siempre se resuelven. <risa> y a decir verdad, por mi parte yo opino lo contrario. Eh, generalmente las fans son las que te hablan siempre a ti primero. Ah, ¿sí? Sí. <risa> yo no veo mensajes por ningún lado. Ah, bueno... De, olvidemos eso, mira, mejor ¿por qué no vamos a comer una pizza? Yo conozco un excelente lugar, ¿qué dices? Está bien, vayamos. De... Uh, oh, no, espera, espera. Uh, últimamente me he sentido mal del estómago y, y los, lacto los lácteos me han hecho mal. Por lo tanto, creo que es mejor ir por una ensalada. Oh, 
Eh, sí, claro, está bien, pero hey, ni creas que te la voy a invitar. <risa> Cada quien va a pagar por separado. <risa> ok. So, as you watch, we, we used a lot of idiomatic expressions with the preposition for. Did you understand it all? Well, let's start with some of these idiomatic expressions. The first one is por todas partes, everywhere. Diego, por todas partes. Veo los mensajes de Dios de amor hacia mi vida. Lo veo en la naturaleza. Lo veo en las canciones. Lo veo en mi corazón. Por todas partes. Mm, qué romántico. Bueno, una expresión similar, a similar expression, is por todos lados, on all sides. An example could be, mm, Efraín, ahora que pasó el Día del Amor y la Amistad, ¿Sabes? Yo veía globos, chocolates y rosas por, todas, por todos lados. Ok. Eh, bien. El siguiente es, por último, finally. Para conquistar a una mujer necesitas despertarlas con una serenata, sin ser un día especial llevarle flores. Por último, tratarlas como una reina. Excelente. Muy buenos consejos. Ok, la siguiente es por primera vez, for the first time, for example, a uh, Efraín, hoy por primera vez me levanté a las 5 de la mañana, <ríe> wow, muy temprano, muy bien, ¿a qué? ¿a vomitar? Eh, no, me, en realidad tenía insomnio, ok, bien, the next one is por otra parte, on the other hand, la comida mexicana es la más rica de todo el mundo, por otra parte, si tú no comes picante o no aguantas el chile, no podrás probarla en todo su esplendor. Exactamente. Ok, guys, so the next one is por supuesto. And por supuesto means of course. For example, Efraín, ¿tú me quieres? Por supuesto <laughs> que no. Pues, ¿qué esperabas? ¿Darme el 10% de esto? O sea, grabamos siempre. The next one is por separado, separately. Um, cuando vas a la primera cita, la cuenta se debe de pagar por separado. Hmm. Así es, es la forma moderna de hacerlo. Ok, so the next one is por medio de, by means of. Por ejemplo, uh, Efraín, por favor, pásame la tarea, eh, pásamela por medio de WhatsApp o por medio de... Correo electrónico. Ok. Now, we have, por suerte, fortunately. Diego, la otra vez se me cayó mi cartera. Por suerte, mi cartera es una quesadilla y nadie puede... Nadie pensó que estuviera mi dinero aquí. <risa> qué bueno, qué bueno. Ok, so, the next one, guys, is por lo menos. And por lo menos means at least. And taking the example, the previous example, I can say, bueno... <risa> Por lo menos no perdiste nada de dinero. <risa> Qué buena suerte. Ok, the next one is por completo. Completely. Um, cuando tú tocas las maracas, debes de entregarte por completo a la canción y sentir el ritmo. Good. Ok, so the next one is por lo tanto. Por lo tanto means uh, consequently. Uh, for example. Efra, llevo 35 horas despierto, por lo tanto, entenderás que tengo mucho sueño, así es de que ya vamos a acabar el video, por favor. Ok, ok. Ok, the next one is por dentro, inside. ¿Qué es una torta? Bueno, podemos decir que una torta es un bolillo que lleva por dentro jamón, eh, mayonesa, eh, jitomate, verduras en general, muy rica y saludable. Wow, oh, deliciosa. ¿Mm? Ok, guys, so the next one is por ningún lado, nowhere. Uh, for example, uh, the friend, ¿dónde, ¿dónde está mi celular? No, no lo encuentro por ningún lado. Uh, ¿Te llamo? Uh, sí, claro. Bueno, más al rato, más al rato. Terminemos de grabar. Claro, por supuesto. Ok, the next one is por mi parte. As for me. Digo, ¿qué, ¿a qué, qué país quieres visitar? Ok, a mí me gustaría visitar eh, Uzbekistán. ¿Qué? 
O, bueno, por mi parte yo te recomendaría Perú. Eh, tiene el Machu Picchu, uh, tiene parte del Amazonas, tiene playas, muy completo. Oh, interesante. Ok, now, let's see the sketch again with subtitles this time and let's see what you learned this lesson. Let's go. Masha. Mira, ya tengo tu pelo por todos lados. Oh, oh, wow. Es la primera vez. No. <ríe> es la primera vez que te veo paseando a Masha. No, ¿de qué habla? Siempre la paseo yo. Solo que generalmente lo hago por dentro de la casa. <ríe> <ríe> qué chistoso. <ríe> Oye, por cierto, ¿no has visto dónde puedo conseguir un perro cholo escuincle? Lo he buscado por todas partes y no sé dónde conseguirlo. Bueno, eh, pues por suerte aquí hay uno. ¿En dónde? ¿Qué? ¡Ja! ¡Qué chistosito! Bueno, mira, por lo menos yo tengo buen sentido del humor, pero, hey, ¿tú qué tienes? Te veo eh, bastante triste. Es que son muchas cosas, Diego. No entraba a la escuela de música. Eh, me entregué por completo en la audición y aún así no lo logré. Eh, no estoy muy bien económicamente. Eh, Tampoco, todos dicen de lo guapo que eres tú en nuestros videos y nadie me dice nada a mí. Bueno Efra, pues mira, entiendo eh, que estés triste, eh, pero vamos, tú siempre encuentras la forma de llegar a tus objetivos, no te rindes fácil. Pues es cierto, gracias Diego. Uh, también me enteré de otra escuela de música por medio de internet. De que esta se especializaba en piano y creo que es buena, tal vez logre entrar. Por supuesto, tú eres un excelente pianista, sin duda vas a poder entrar. <risa> Además, por otra parte, los problemas económicos siempre se resuelven. <risa> y a decir verdad, por mi parte yo opino lo contrario. Eh, generalmente las fans son las que te hablan siempre a ti primero. ¿Ah, sí? Sí. <risa> yo no veo mensajes por ningún lado. Ah... Bueno, eh, olvidemos eso. Mira, mejor, ¿por qué no vamos a comer una pizza? Yo conozco un excelente lugar. ¿Qué dices? Está bien, vayamos. ¿Eh? Uh, oh, no, espera, espera. Uh, últimamente me he sentido mal del estómago y, y los, lacto los lácteos me han hecho mal. Por lo tanto, creo que es mejor ir por una ensalada. Oh... Uh, sí, claro, está bien, pero hey, ni creas que te la voy a invitar. <risa> Cada quien va a pagar por separado. <risa> ok. That's it for today, my friends from SpanishPod101.com. We hope that you have enjoyed this video. If so, please give us your thumbs up and don't forget to share with other learners so they can also learn these idiomatic expressions using POR. Please, if you have any comment, opinion, or doubt, please put it in the comment section right below. We do read your comments and reply to them. Nos vemos en el siguiente video, chicos. ¡Hasta luego! Hola, mi nombre es Romina. Mucho gusto. Hello, my name is Romina. Nice to meet you. Uh, today, I have a very good topic for you. Today, we're going to talk about contracciones en español. Today we're going to talk about contractions in Spanish, Spanish contractions, okay? Which sounds painful, like giving birth, <laughs> but it's not. And although contracciones sounds really, really difficult to pronounce in Spanish, if you practice a few times, it's not so hard. Repite, contracciones, contracciones, contracciones. <laughs> There you go. You are going to be extremely happy to learn contractions in Spanish. And let me tell you why. Um, first, if your language, if your mother language is English, um, you have so many contractions in English, okay? Instead, instead of saying, I do not, you say, I don't. That's a contraction. Instead of saying the whole two words, you fuse these two into one. You just say, I don't. You are saving time and you're saving energy, okay? It's all about the economy of the language. That's why contractions occur. Um, and because English is such a practical language, <laughs> uh, you have heaps 
of contractions to be learned, right? Same thing if your language, if your first language is Italian, or maybe you are also learning Italian alongside with Spanish. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't learned Italian myself, but I heard that they have about like 12 or 16 contractions, okay? Um, but in Spanish, good news amigos, muy buenas noticias, we only have two. Yes, only two. Okay, so these two contractions are only happening with two prepositions, dos preposiciones en español. La primera preposición, the first preposition that is going to have this contraction is la preposición a. It's with the preposition a. Okay, um, this preposition will have different translations depending on the context, of course, uh, but usually it's translated as, um, as direction to, uh, for, uh, you know, it, it really has many translations. Uh, there are other videos where we explain uh, the different meanings of the preposition. I definitely go back to those. Today I'm just focusing in the um, contractions um, and not quite on the meaning of each of these prepositions, okay? Uh, just briefly, I want you to remember that a usually is translated as two, okay? Um, la, otra prepo la otra preposición que tiene una contracción en español es la preposición de. Another preposition that has a contraction in Spanish is the preposition de, which usually means, depending on the context of, um, like the preposition of, uh, yeah, like the preposition of. <laughs> and of course, many other meanings. And uh, definitely go back to other videos where we explain this as well. Okay, so how this contraction works in Spanish? Basically, when either of these two prepositions meets with the um, article, the, the, the male or masculine singular article, el, which in English is going to be translated as the, when you have the preposition a plus el, okay, I have a little chart for you here, I hope you can see this clearly. Um, so basically what's going to happen is that if you have the preposition a plus el, it becomes al, okay, please repeat. Al, 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 very good, but if you have the preposition de followed by el, so in Spanish it sounds a little bit weird if you say de el, de el, okay, uh, even now that I'm saying it, I feel that I'm sounding retarded. So, <laughs> what we do is we contract these two. The L becomes del. 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 So that's it. Those are the only two contractions we have in Spanish. Let's practice, okay? Because if we don't practice, we forget what we just learned. Please complete the following phrases with the Spanish contractions. Bolivia y Paraguay están al norte de Argentina. El agua del mar es salada. ¿Vamos al cine? Vengo del doctor. Okay. So the contractions that we just learned are the official contractions of, of Spanish. What I'm trying to say is that they're 
widely spread in our language, okay? Uh, people say uh, those contractions and, and they're grammatically correct in Spain, in Mexico, in Colombia, in Paraguay, in any country uh, where we speak Spanish, okay? We are going to be using these con con uh, contractions, okay? They are formal. They, they are formally accepted in our language. But we have more contractions <laughs> that are not widely spread, meaning that some regions will be using these contractions and they are quite known by other people, but it doesn't mean that we all use it and they're not accepted as such. In informal situations, for example, you wouldn't use these contractions, okay? So the first one I want to show you is the contraction of the, another preposition, which is the preposition para, okay? So instead of saying the whole word, instead of saying para, we get rid of the ra, okay? Instead of saying para arriba, we say para arriba. Instead of saying para qué, we are gonna say pa qué. Repite, por favor. Pa arriba. Pa qué. Pa arriba. Pa qué. They're really informal, okay? So do not use these ones. If you're talking to an elderly person, if you're talking to, I don't know, someone that it's in a hierarchy higher than yourself, okay? Please don't use these ones. Another one that I found adorable in Spanish, I absolutely love it. I don't use it myself, but I, when I hear other people using this one in Spanish, I just love it. And it's when they drop the D between vowels, okay? Uh, for example, um, some dialects of Cuba, instead of saying pescado, which means fish, right? Uh, they will say pescado. Repeat it. Pescado. Pescado. Another one is that when they're using the, the participle, uh, they will... They will drop the D as well. I've, I've heard this quite a lot in Spain, for example, um, in Barcelona, I think. And this is, uh, for example, instead of saying, um, has comprado, have you bought the car? Has comprado el auto? They will say, has comprado el auto? <laughs> Which is very cute. Uh, please repeat. Has comprado? Has Comprao. And another one that we use quite a lot is with the verb estar, okay? So instead of saying está, the whole thing, we just say ta. <laughs> uh, again, this is very informal, so please make sure you only use it uh, in very informal situations with people that you feel very comfortable with. Um, so, for example, instead of saying está bien or está mal, you're going to say está bien, está bien, está mal, está mal. Okay, amigos, muchas gracias por ver este video. Today I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope that you enjoy it yourself as well. Um, again, muchísimas gracias por watching and I will see you next time. Nos vemos. Adiós. Hola, bienvenidos. Mi nombre es Romina. Mucho gusto. Hello and welcome. My name is Romina. Nice to meet you. Today I'm going to teach you 10 phrases with the verb tener. Do you know what this verb means in Spanish? Tener significa to have. Tener means to have in Spanish. So I'm going to teach you 10 phrases. And you might be wondering why 10 phrases? I just like that number. It's like the Ten Commandments. <laughs> there are certainly many, many more phrases with the verb tener um, that as you're learning Spanish, you're gonna pick up these phrases. Believe me, there are many more with the verb tener. But today we're just gonna focus in the main ones. We're gonna be focusing in the ones that you're gonna be using more often than not. ¿Estás listo? Are you ready? Vamos, let's go. La primera frase es tener frío. The first phrase is 
to be cold, okay? This is something that you're gonna be using very often if you travel during winter to Latin America or Spain. Tener frío. Repite, por favor. Tener frío. Tener frío. Now, what happens if you travel during summertime and it's really, really hot in the Caribbean? What would you say? Tener calor. <laughs> Why am I doing this? This is actually for cold. Tener calor. Repite, por favor. Tener calor. Tener calor. Okay, now imagine that you're walking down the street, uh, it's lunchtime, and you can smell this beautiful barbecue being cooked, and your stomach grumbles, and then you want to say, God, I'm hungry. So you're going to say, tener hambre. Repite, por favor. Tener hambre. Tener hambre. Very important here, make sure you're saying hambre and not hombre. This is actually a common mistake and it's kind of cute and, and pretty funny. Hombre means a man, okay? So instead of saying that you're hungry, um, you are saying that you have a man, okay? Um, yeah, just be aware of it. So you just finished your barbecue and you would love to have a beer to complement that meat you just finished eating. So you are gonna say, I'm quite thirsty. You're gonna say, tener sed. Tener sed. Tener sed. I'm sorry, that's actually the dog scratching the door. Sorry about that. Just one moment. So let's imagine that you went out dancing last night and this morning you wake up feeling exhausted and you have to head over to work and you're feeling tired, your eyes are closing, you are feeling sleepy. So how do you say that you're feeling sleepy in Spanish? Do you know? Sabes? Se dice, we say it as tener sueño. Tener sueño. I'm sorry, that's a cat now. <laughs> sorry. Okay, lo siento muchísimo. I'm sorry about that. Uh, continuamos, let's continue. Uh, please repeat, por favor repite, once more. Tengo sueño. Tengo sueño. Tengo sueño. The phrases that we use so far are really, really important and you should definitely memorize these ones because you're gonna use them quite a lot when you're in Latin America and Spain. And I'm not too sure if you noticed, but the translation from Spanish and into English doesn't really work that well uh, because we are saying different things. Um, in English, you say, I am thirsty, I am feeling hot, um, I'm hot, <laughs> I'm cold. Um, you, you're, you're using a different verb, you're not using the verb I have, which is the one we are using in Spanish. Uh, we're literally saying I have thirst, I have thirst, I have heat, I have hot, I have cold, um, I have sleepiness, okay? So just be aware of it, that the translations are not always 100% accurate, but of course we're meaning exactly the same thing. Tengo sed, I'm thirsty, I just want a glass of water. Okay, so now I wanna show you other phrases with the verb tener that are a little bit more uh, complicated, I would say, uh, a little bit more complex. Um, so the first one I wanna show you is Tener miedo a. Repite, por favor. Tener miedo a. 
tener miedo a. Okay, so if you're someone that has a lot of phobias, you're gonna love this sentence because we are saying I'm scared to something, I'm afraid of something, right? Let's say for example spiders, that you're scared to death to spiders, right? So you have to use this phrase, tengo miedo a las arañas. What about if you are scared to heights like myself? So you're gonna say Tengo miedo a las alturas. So as you can see, um, I'm just adding whatever I'm scared of at the end of the phrase after a, and all I'm doing is including the article before the word, okay? Instead of saying I'm scared of spiders, I'm sort of saying like I'm scared of the spiders. Tengo miedo a las arañas. So just be aware of it. Okay, this one, it's a really cool phrase. I think if you know this one, it's gonna be um, pretty impressive when you're talking to Latinos or people from Spain. They're gonna be a little bit impressed if you say this. Um, this, is a, this is a phrase that we use quite a lot. Maybe you already heard of this or maybe you already know it. Tengo ganas de. Repite por favor. Tengo ganas de. Tengo ganas de. Okay, so here we are saying, I feel like, you know when you're feeling like you want to do something, you want to go out dancing or having a beer with friends, this is a phrase you're going to be using, okay? Tengo ganas de. Salir a bailar. Tengo ganas de beber cerveza con amigos. Tengo ganas de ver televisión. It's very easy. All you have to do is think of an activity that you want to do and then just put it at the end of the phrase in the infinitive form. And what about if you don't feel like doing something? Just simply add a no somewhere in the sentence, right? In the beginning, before the verb tener. Not somewhere, in the beginning, before the verb tener. Okay, so you're gonna say, no tengo ganas de. Okay, let's say that you don't feel like going out for a walk. No tengo ganas de caminar. The next phrase is, tener prisa. Repeat, please. Tener prisa. Tener prisa. I think a lot of people will be surprised that we have such a phrase in Spanish because we are always running late everywhere. <laughs> but we do actually have it. Tener prisa. I'm rushing. I need to hurry up. Otherwise, I'm going to be late. Tengo prisa. Bien. Ahora vamos a la frase número 9. So now we're going to phrase number 9, okay? Uh, this is a good one if you, if you need to speak to a doctor or if you're going to a hospital, okay? The phrase goes like this. Tengo dolor de... So here you're saying, I feel pain or um, I have pain of something, something hurts, right? So for example, let's say you're, you're having a headache, okay, your head hurts. So you're gonna say in Spanish, tengo dolor de cabeza, hmm? cabeza. Okay, repite por favor, tengo dolor de cabeza. Tengo dolor de cabeza. Tengo dolor de cabeza. Y finalmente hemos llegado a la frase número 10. I love this one. This is, I love this one. We use it all the time. Um, this is tener suerte. Repeat please. Tener suerte. Tener suerte. Tener suerte literally means to be lucky, okay? We got to, to, we got to, to be lucky, 
we're gonna get the real lucky. <laughs> this is something that we use all the time in, in Spanish because we are always uh, trying to cheer each other, to wish good luck uh, to each other, no? Uh, for example, que tengas suerte, like good luck, I hope everything goes well for you, que tengas suerte. All right, my friends, those are the 10 phrases I wanted to teach you um, with the verb tener in Spanish. Believe me, there are many, many more out there with the verb tener, uh, but I think if you memorize this 10, uh, this ten uh, it's a great start. So definitely go back a few times in the video, make sure you repeat after me until you get the pronunciation right and make sure you remember them. So next time you meet with your Latinos amigos or with the, with the people from Spain, you can say any of these phrases. Muchas gracias for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Adios. Hola, bienvenidos. Hello and welcome. Mi nombre es Romina. My name is Romina. Mucho gusto. Nice to meet you. Hoy voy a explicarte tres estructuras gramaticales para dar sugerencias o recomendaciones con la palabra mejor. Today I'm going to teach you three grammatical structures to give other people advice uh, or suggestions or recommendations with the word mejor. ¿Qué significa mejor? So what does mejor means in Spanish? Mejor can be translated as best or better, dependiendo del contexto. So depending on the context, it can be translated as one word or the other. Bien, así es como vamos a hacerlo. Primero voy a explicarte las frases, ¿ok? Voy a pedirte que repitas después de mí varias veces, así practicas la pronunciación. Y al final del video vamos a hacer ejercicios para que tú practiques las nuevas estructuras. So this is the way we're going to do it. Um, first, I'm going to explain you the structures, okay? I'm going to ask you to repeat a few times so you get the hand of the pronunciation. And at the end of the video, I'm going to ask you to complete a few exercises so you can practice at home. ¿Estás listo? Vamos. Are you ready? Let's go. Número uno. ¿Por qué no mejor más presente del indicativo? Please repeat. ¿Por qué no mejor más presente del indicativo. Por favor, repite. ¿Por qué no mejor? ¿Por qué no mejor? ¿Por qué no mejor? ¿Por qué no mejor? ¿Qué no mejor? Okay, so after this, you have to use the present, uh, the verbs in the present tense of the indicative form. Okay, so the way you use this phrase in Spanish is in situations when someone is telling you their issue, they're, they're talking to you about a problem they're having, and they're thinking about a solution, um, but you don't consider this solution good enough and you're, you're thinking of giving them another option, okay? The rules are that one instead, okay? So it's, it's almost like if you are saying like, why don't you do this instead, okay? Or it would be better if you did this other thing, okay? That's, that's what you're saying with this phrase. ¿Por qué no mejor? Okay? Um, so you're ruling out a different idea, a previous idea, okay? Uh, let's say, for example, your friend is having issues at work and uh, this person feels overwhelmed and it's uh, he's or she is saying that uh, they want to quit their job and you think this is a bit dramatic, a bit drastic and maybe just um, talking to the manager will fix the issue, right? So you're going to say in Spanish, ¿Por qué no mejor hablas con tu jefe. Please repeat. ¿Por qué no mejor hablas con tu jefe? Muy bien. Número 2. 
Okay, so the second structure I'm going to show you now has two options. You can choose whichever you like. Uh, the first one is, será mejor que... And then the other option is, va a ser mejor que... Okay, uh, please repeat. Será mejor que... Será mejor que... Será mejor que... Va a ser mejor que... Va a ser mejor que... Va a ser mejor que. Okay, so what's the difference? It's basically um, the verb ser, um, we are using this in the future tense, okay? We are basically saying in Spanish with these two options, they, they mean exactly the same thing. So what we are saying in, in Spanish is it will be best. It will be best. So we are talking in the future tense, okay? Um, in Spanish, as you know, we have two options for the future tense, right? Uh, so the first one is uh, the simple future, será, so that's the conjugation of the verb ser, to be, in the future, in the simple future, será. Or we can use a structure with the verb ir, a, e, va, a, ser right um so you just need to use va a ser and that's also the future right it's gonna be it's, it's gonna mean it will be you might be wondering which option should i use which one um it's more frequent than the other one or are there certain countries that would or nationalities that would, would prefer to use one or the other and the thing is that no, not really. They're both <laughs> equally the same. So another thing to keep in mind with this phrase is that you're going to be using the verbs in the present tense of the subjunctive, subjunctivo. Okay, so make sure you revise the sub subjunctivo. Going back to a previous example, okay, um, this time I'm going to say, será mejor que hables con tu jefe. Va a ser mejor que hables con tu jefe. Repite, por favor. Será mejor que hables con tu jefe. Va a ser mejor que hables con tu jefe. So again, here we can be using this phrase as an alternative to something else. Like you're, you're just giving them a suggestion. Like I think it would be best if you uh, talk to your boss instead of quitting your job. Uh, so you will, you're saying it would be best, right? But you don't necessarily need to wait for them to uh, say a suggestion or, or, a, or a solution that they, they're thinking of. You don't have to wait until they do that to use this phrase. Uh, we actually use it all the time without necessarily cancelling a previous idea. Numero tres. The last structure that I'm going to teach you is pretty straightforward. It's just the word mejor plus the verbs in the imperative form. So make sure you practice the verb conjugation in the imperative form. Um, so it's very, it's very easy. It's just that mejor más imperativo. You're going to say, mejor habla con tu jefe. And if you want to make this idea negative, you just have to make it, uh, you just need to conjugate the verbs in the negative form of the imperative. Mejor no hables con tu jefe. Vamos a practicar. Let's practice. Please repeat after me. Mejor habla con tu jefe. Mejor habla con tu jefe. Mejor no hables con tu jefe. Mejor no hables con tu jefe.
Now I would like for you to give suggestions or recommendations with the three structures that you just learned um, to these uh, four issues. Um, try to say as many phrases as you can. Tengo problemas para dormir. Quiero perder peso. Me gustaría aprender mandarín. Me gustaría estar de novia. Okay, amigos, those are the three structures I wanted to teach you with the word mejor. I hope that you understand everything, that you understand how to use these structures. I definitely recommend you to go back a few times in the video, practice these uh, phrases as much as you can, and definitely it's very important for you to practice the conjugations of the verbs in Spanish for the present tense in the indicative form, uh, for the present tense in the subjunctive form, and of course the imperative. Muchas gracias, thank you so much as usual for watching this video, and we will see you in the next time. Nos vemos en la próxima clase. Adios. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, and discover new resources. By the way, you can download all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see right now on the website. So click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is 21 ways to break your routine and master a language. You're going to learn one, the importance of taking a break, two, how to update your language learning routine, and three, 21 ways to break your learning routine. If you've ever felt like you're not making any learning progress or are in a rut, then this is for you. It's time to break your routine. You'll find out how in just a second. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the How to Count to 1 Billion PDF eBook. Maybe you can already count to 10 in your target language. But with this new eBook, you go all the way up to 1 billion. Download it for free right now. Second, do you know the 40 most common verbs? With this new Useful Verbs PDF Cheat Sheet, you'll master the 40 most common verbs that all beginners should know. Third, do you know the 12 habits of highly effective language learners? You'll find out what smart learners do differently, and you'll learn how to say these habits, like don't procrastinate in your target language. Fourth, must know money phrases. Can you talk about money? This one minute lesson will teach you phrases like, I'm broke, time is money, and I wanna be rich. To get these free resources, click the link in the description below. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. 21 ways to break your routine and master a language. So, have you ever felt like you were in a language learning rut? You have a routine going, you're studying, but you're not really pushing the needle on your progress. So, what should you do? Let's jump into the first part. Part one, the importance of taking a break. So before you quit learning languages completely, you should just take a day or two off. Why? Well, there's a good reason why many cultures rest for one or two days out of the week. It's why we go on vacation, why we take days off. We need time to recharge our batteries because language learning is work. It's nonstop dedication to one of many goals you have in your life, right? You have other things in mind, bills, relationships, work, school, vacations. So first, if you feel like you're in a rut, take a break for a day or two, do something else, and let your brain rest. The next step, update your current language learning routine. Part two, how to update your language learning routine. What do I mean by that? I mean, do something completely different with your language learning. Do something you enjoy. And there are two ways you can update your routine. First, do something new within the specific skill you're working on. For example, if you like reading and want to continue reading, change the resource, put down the textbook and try a comic, or our easy extensive reading books on the website. The second way is to change it up completely. 
If you're focusing on grammar, stop that and switch over to something else, like practicing your listening with audio lessons or podcasts. The point here is you break a routine you're tired of and you do something else, something you enjoy, but you're still learning the language. The result is you don't burn out. You have something new to look forward to and you're still taking action on your language goal. So right now you might be thinking, okay, I wanna break my routine. What else can I do? Let's get into the third part, 21 ways to break your learning routine. The key here is to do something new and fun, or at least something that's easy enough so that you're not overwhelmed. And for that, you need some new resources and study tools. So here are 21 examples. But if you have more approaches, leave a comment. These are just suggestions and you need to find out what works for you. Okay, if you're focusing on vocabulary, set small goals. Learn just five words a day. That's it. Sign up for our free word of the day emails. You learn one new word a day every day. Learn words and phrases with our free vocabulary lists. These cover all kinds of topics, seasons, holidays, and common phrases. Use spaced repetition flashcards to drill words. Or if you're listening to music or watching a show or a YouTube video, make it a goal to write down five words you don't know. For grammar, listen to our audio lessons. With every lesson conversation, you'll learn the grammar rules for the lines used in the conversation. It's a lot easier to hear grammar in action than to read about the rule. Look up example sentences using that specific grammar rule. Again, it's better to learn from multiple examples and see the rules in action. Get a grammar workbook and drill through the problems. For speaking, try and talk to yourself. Say what you're doing out loud. Read out loud. You can do this with any reading resource, including our lessons. Shadow what you hear. If you've heard this tactic before, there's a good reason why you're hearing about it again, because it works. And if you're not doing it, you're missing out. For listening, this is the easiest skill to practice. Just watch a YouTube lesson. You can also look up songs and TV show clips. Listen to our audio lessons on the site. Immerse yourself. Download our dialogue tracks that give you just the conversation in the language and play them on repeat. For writing, make it a goal to write one or two sentences about your day, or simply copy out text from elsewhere, whether our lesson or a social media post you saw. You can also write down all the new words you learned today. Finally, for reading, it's a bit tough to find an easier, more fun routine, but try these. Read along as you listen to the audio. So you'll need a resource that gives you text and audio. The audio will make it easier for you to follow along. You can easily do this with our audio lessons. Try kids' books or comics in your target language. Try our extensive reading practice books. These are easy, one-line-a-page books that are designed to get you reading fast. Or find a book about a topic you're interested in. Or a book you read before in your native language. Then try reading it in your target language. Again, the point is, if you feel that you're in a language learning rut, the best thing to do is take a break and then do something new, something easier, something that's fun. Now, what's fun is really up to you as a person. You just learned a whole bunch of ways to learn, but if you have more approaches, please leave a comment. These are just suggestions and you need to find out what works for you. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about a brutally honest way to improve your language skills. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Accountant. Contador. Contador. Afternoon. Tarde. Tarde. Air conditioner. Aire acondicionado. Aire acondicionado. Airplane. Avión. Avión. Airport. Aeropuerto. Aeropuerto. Ankle. Tobillo. Tobillo. Appetizer. Aperitivo. 
aperitivo. Apple. Manzana. Manzana. April. Abril. Abril. Arm. Brazo. Brazo. August. Agosto. Agosto. Autumn. Otoño. Otoño. Banana. Plátano. Plátano. Bathe. Bañar. Bañar. Bathroom. Baño. Baño. Be late. Estar atrasado. Estar atrasado. Beard. Barba. Barba. Beautiful. Hermoso. Hermoso. Bed. Cama. Cama. Bedroom. Recámara. Recámara. Beef. Carne de res. Carne de res. Beer. Cerveza. Cerveza. To believe. Creer. Creer. Beverage. Bebidas. Bebidas. Bicycle. Bicicleta. Bicicleta. Bird. Pájaro. Pájaro. Birthday. Cumpleaños. Cumpleaños. Black. Negro. Negro. Blouse. Blusa. Blusa. Blue. Azul. Azul. Boat. Barco. Barco. Bone. Hueso. Hueso. Book. Libro. Libro. Boutique. 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 Boyfriend. Novio. Novio. Brazier. 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 Bread. Pan. Pan. Brown. Café. Café. Buffet. 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 Bus. Autobús. Autobús. Busy. Ocupado. Ocupado. Button. Botón. Botón. Buy. Comprar. Comprar. Cake. Pastel. Pastel. Call. Llamar. Llamar. Can. 
Poder. Poder. Cash. Efectivo. Efectivo. Cat. Gato. Gato. Ceiling. Techo. Techo. Cell phone. Teléfono móvil. Teléfono móvil. Chair. Silla. Silla. Chalk. His. His. Cheap. Barato. Barato. Cheek. Mejilla. Mejilla. Chef. 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 Chicken. Pollo. Pollo. Child. Niño. Niño. Chin. Barbilla. Barbilla. City. Ciudad. Ciudad. Class. Clase. Clase. Clear sky. Cielo claro. Cielo claro. To clear up. Despejar. Despejar. Clerk. Empleado. Empleado. Cloth. Trapo. Trapo. Clothes. Ropa. Ropa. Cloudy. Nublado. Nublado. Coffee. Café. Café. Cold. Frío. Frío. Collar. Collarín. Collarín. College. Colegio. Colegio. Come. Venir. Venir. Company worker. Trabajador de la compañía. Trabajador de la compañía. Computer. Computadora. Computadora. Cook. Cocinar. Cocinar. Corn. Maíz. Maíz. Correct. Corregir. Corregir. Cost. Costo. Costo. Country. País. País. Cow. Vaca. Vaca. Crab. Cangrejo. Cangrejo. Credit card. Tarjeta de crédito. Tarjeta de crédito. Customer. Cliente. Cliente. Daughter. Hija. 
Hija. Day. Día. Día. Debit card. Tarjeta de débito. Tarjeta de débito. December. Diciembre. Diciembre. Dessert. Postre. Postre. Dictionary. Diccionario. Diccionario. Dining room. Comedor. Comedor. Dinner. Cena. Cena. Dishwasher. Lavavajillas. Lavavajillas. Do. Hacer. Hacer. Dog. Perro. Perro. Dress. Vestido. Vestido. Drink. Beber. Beber. Driver. Conductor. Conductor. Ear. Oreja. Oreja. Eat. Comer. Comer. Eat out. Comer afuera. Comer afuera. Eight. Ocho. Ocho. Eighteen. Dieciocho. Dieciocho. Eighty-eight. Ochenta y ocho. Ochenta y ocho. Elastic band. Banda elástica. Banda elástica. Elbow. Codo. Codo. Electricity. Electricidad. Electricidad. Elevator. Ascensor. Ascensor. Eleven. Once. Once. Email. Correo electrónico. Correo electrónico. Engineer. Ingeniero. Ingeniero. English. Inglés. Inglés. Enter. Entrar. Entrar. Erase. Borrar. Borrar. Eraser. Borrador. Borrador. Expensive. Caro. Caro. Explain. Explicar. Explicar. I. Ojo. Ojo. Eyebrow. Ceja. Ceja. Eyelash. Pestaña. Pestaña. Eyelid. Párpado. Párpado. Face. Cara. Cara. 
factory worker. Obrero industrial. Obrero industrial. Fan. Ventilador. Ventilador. Farmer. Agricultor. Agricultor. Father. Padre. Padre. February. Febrero. Febrero. Fifteen. Quince. Quince. Fifty-five. Cincuenta y cinco. Cincuenta y cinco. Final. Exámenes finales. Exámenes finales. Firefighter. Bombero. Bombero. Fish. Pez. Pez. Five. Cinco. Cinco. Flight. Vuelo. Vuelo. Flight attendant. Sobrecargo. Sobrecargo. Floor. Suelo. Suelo. Food. Comida. Comida. Foot. Pie. Pie. Forehead. Frente. Frente. Forty-four. Cuarenta y cuatro. Cuarenta y cuatro. Four. Cuatro. Cuatro. Fourteen. Catorce. Catorce. Freeze. Congelar. Congelar. Friday. Viernes. Viernes. Friend. Amigo. Amigo. Fruit. Fruta. Fruta. Full. Lleno. Lleno. Get up. Levantarse. Levantarse. Girlfriend. Novia. Novia. Glasses. Gafas. Gafas. Go. Ir. Ir. Go out. Salir. Salir. Goat. Cabra. Cabra. Gold. Oro. Oro. Grape. Uva. Uva. Grass. Pasto. Pasto. Gray. Gris. Gris. Green. Verde. Verde. Gym. Gimnasio. Gimnasio. Hair. Cabello. Cabello. 
Hair dryer. Secador de pelo. Secador de pelo. Hallway. Pasillo. Pasillo. Hand. Mano. Mano. Headphones. Audífonos. Audífonos. Holiday. Vacaciones. Vacaciones. Home cooking. Comida casera. Comida casera. Horse. Caballo. Caballo. Hospital. 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 Hot. Caluroso. Caluroso. Hotel. 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 Hour. Hora. Hora. House. Casa. Casa. Housewife. Ama de casa. Ama de casa. Humid. Húmedo. Húmedo. Hungry. Hambriento. Hambriento. Husband. Marido. Marido. Ice. Hielo. Hielo. Incorrect. Incorrecto. Incorrecto. Information. Información. Información. Internet. 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 Jacket. Chamarra. Chamarra. January. Enero. Enero. Jeans. Pantalones de mezclilla. Pantalones de mezclilla. July. Julio. Julio. June. Junio. Junio. Kitchen. Cocina. Cocina. Lamb. Cordero. Cordero. Language. Lenguaje. Lenguaje. Large. L. Grande. Grande. Lawyer. Abogado. Abogado. Learn. Aprender. Aprender. Lecture. Lectura. Lectura. Leg. Pierna. Pierna. Lesson. Lección. Lección. Letter. Letra. Letra. Library. Biblioteca. Biblioteca. License. 
licencia, licencia. Lip, labio, labio. Living room, sala de estar, sala de estar. Lobster, langosta, langosta. Luggage. Equipaje. Equipaje. Lunch. Almuerzo. Almuerzo. Mall. Centro comercial. Centro comercial. Man. Hombre. Hombre. Manager. Gerente. Gerente. Map. Mapa. Mapa. March. Marzo. Marzo. Marker. Marcador. Marcador. May. Mayo. Mayo. Meat. Carne. Carne. Microwave oven. Horno de microondas. Horno de microondas. Midnight. Medianoche. Medianoche. Milk. Leche. Leche. Mini skirt. Mini falda. Mini falda. Miss. Fallar. Fallar. Monday. Lunes. Lunes. Money. Dinero. Dinero. Month. Mes. Mes. Morning. Mañana. Mañana. Mother. Madre. Madre. Motorbike. Moto. Moto. Motorcycle. Motocicleta. Motocicleta. Mouse. Ratón. Ratón. Mouth. Boca. Boca. Muggy. Bochornoso. Bochornoso. Muscle. Músculo. Músculo. Mustache. Bigote. Bigote. Neck. Cuello. Cuello. Necktie. Corbata. Corbata. Need. Necesitar. Necesitar. Needle. Aguja. Aguja. Night. Noche. Noche. Nine. Nueve. Nueve. Nineteen. Diecinueve. Diecinueve. Ninety-nine. Noventa y nueve. 
99. Noon. Medio día. Medio día. Nose. Nariz. Nariz. Notebook. Cuaderno. Cuaderno. November. Noviembre. Noviembre. Nut. Nuez. Nuez. October. Octubre. Octubre. Office worker. Trabajador de oficina. Trabajador de oficina. One. Uno. Uno. One hundred. Cien. Cien. Onions. Cebolla. Cebolla. Orange. Naranja. Naranja. Oven. Horno. Horno. Pajamas. Pijama. Pijama. Pants. Pantalones. Pantalones. Paper. Papel. Papel. Passenger. Pasajero. Pasajero. Passport. Pasaporte. Pasaporte. Peanut. Cacahuate. Cacahuate. Pen. Pluma. Pluma. Pencil. Lapis. Lapis. Pepper. Pimienta. Pimienta. Pharmacy. Farmacia. Farmacia. Phone number. Número de teléfono. Número de teléfono. Pick up. Contestar. Contestar. Pig. Cerdo. Cerdo. Pink. Rosado. Rosado. Pocket. Bolsillo. Bolsillo. Police officer. Policía. Policía. Pork. Puerco. Puerco. Pot. Olla. Olla. Potato. Papa. Papa. Power outlet. Toma de corriente. Toma de corriente. President. Presidente. Presidente. Price. Precio. Precio. Problem. Problema. Problema. Professional athlete. Atleta profesional. Atleta profesional. Question. Pregunta. Pregunta. 
rain. Llover. Llover. Rainy. Lluvioso. Lluvioso. Read. Leer. Leer. Read aloud. Leer en voz alta. Leer en voz alta. Receipt. Recibo. Recibo. Red. Rojo. Rojo. Refrigerator. Refrigerador. Refrigerador. Rent. Rentar. Rentar. Repeat. Repetir. Repetir. Resemble. Parecerse. Parecerse. Respect. Respetar. Respetar. Restaurant. Restaurante. Restaurante. Return. Devolver. Devolver. Rice. Arroz. Arroz. Room. Cuarto. Cuarto. Sale. Venta. Venta. Salesperson. Vendedor. Vendedor. Salt. Sal. Sal. Salty. Salado. Salado. Say. Decir. Decir. Scooter. 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 Seafood. Mariscos. Mariscos. Search. Buscar. Buscar. Sí. Ver. Ver. September. Septiembre. Septiembre. Serve. Servir. Servir. Seven. Siete. Siete. Seventeen. Diecisiete. Diecisiete. Seventy-seven. Setenta y siete. Setenta y siete. Sheep. Oveja. Oveja. Shirt. Blouse. Camisa. Camisa. Shop. Comprar. Comprar. Shorts. Pantalón corto. Pantalón corto. Sightsee. Visitar lugares de interés. Visitar lugares de interés. Silver. Plateado. Plateado. Six. Seis. Seis. Sixteen. Dieciséis. 
16. 66. 66. 66. Skirt. Falda. Falda. Sleep. Dormir. Dormir. Sleeve. Manga. Manga. Snack. Bocadillo. Bocadillo. Snake. Serpiente. Serpiente. Sofa. 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 Son. Hijo. Hijo. Speak. Hablar. Hablar. Spicy. Picante. Picante. Spring. Primavera. Primavera. Stand. Estar de pie. Estar de pie. Stomach. Estómago. Estómago. Store. Tienda. Tienda. Student. Estudiante. Estudiante. Study. Estudiar. Estudiar. Sugar. Azúcar. Azúcar. Summer. Verano. Verano. Sunday. Domingo. Domingo. Sunglasses. Gafas de sol. Gafas de sol. Sunny. Soleado. Soleado. Supermarket. Supermercado. Supermercado. Sweater. 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 Sweets. Dulces. Dulces. Swimsuit. Traje de baño. Traje de baño. Table. Mesa. Mesa. Talk. Hablar. Hablar. Taxi. 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 Tea. Te. Te. Teach. Enseñar. Enseñar. Teacher. Maestra. Maestra. Television. Televisión. Televisión. Temperature. Temperatura. Temperatura. Ten. Diez. Diez. Text. Enviar mensajes de texto. Enviar mensajes de texto. Text message. Mensaje de texto. 
Mensaje de texto. Textbook. Libro de texto. Libro de texto. Thank. Agradecer. Agradecer. Thirsty. Sediento. Sediento. Thirteen. Trece. Trece. Thirty-three. Treinta y tres. Treinta y tres. Three. Tres. Tres. Thursday. Jueves. Jueves. Time. Tiempo. Tiempo. Today. Hoy. Hoy. Toilet paper. Papel higiénico. Papel higiénico. Tomatoes. Tomate. Tomate. Tomorrow. Mañana. Mañana. Tongue. Lengua. Lengua. Tooth. Diente. Diente. Toothbrush. Cepillo de dientes. Cepillo de dientes. Travel. Viajar. Viajar. Turkey. Pavo. Pavo. Twelve. Doce. Doce. Twenty-one. Veintiuno. Veintiuno. Twenty-two. Veintidós. Veintidós. Two. Dos. Dos. Ugly. Feo. Feo. Underline. Subrayar. Subrayar. Underwear. Ropa interior. Ropa interior. University. Universidad. Universidad. Use. Usar. Usar. Vacation. Vacaciones. Vacaciones. Vegetable. Verdura. Verdura. Vehicle. Vehículo. Vehículo. Vest. Chaleco. Chaleco. Waistcoat. Chaleco. Chaleco. Wall. Pared. Pared. Want. Querer. Querer. Watch. Reloj. Reloj. Watch. Ver. Ver. Water. Agua. Agua. Watermelon. Sandia. Sandia. Weather. Clima. 
clima. Weekend. Fin de semana. Fin de semana. Wheat. Trigo. Trigo. White. Blanco. Blanco. Wife. Esposa. Esposa. Wi-Fi. 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 Window. Ventana. Ventana. Windy. Ventoso. Ventoso. Wine. Vino. Vino. Winter. Invierno. Invierno. Wipes. Limpiar. Limpiar. Wireless. Inalámbrico. Inalámbrico. Woman. Mujer. Mujer. Work. Trabajo. Trabajo. Rest. Muñeca. Muñeca. Write. Escribir. Escribir. Year. Año. Año. Yellow. Amarillo. Amarillo. Yesterday. Ayer. Ayer. Zero. Cero. Cero. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.